welcome back to Cyborgs and Teacups. So today we are going to do a recap and my top 10 favorite moments from last night's episode and finale of Legend of Korra. I have my little notes here and my pen just to make sure I do not forget anything that's on my list to talk about. And also I want to thank you to everyone who's seen and liked and reblogged my reaction video. I don't mean to be waiting this day. It was also filmed right after watching the episode, which aired 30 minutes before they said it was going to be, so we were lucky to be able to watch it a little earlier than most people. My top 10 moments will just be me recapping the entire finale and telling you guys my favorite moments, starting with number 10 with Bo Lin lifting the rubble up and you see Team Avatar all alive probably hurt, probably really really hurt, but they're all alive because in the previous episode I felt like someone was gonna die in that laser attack. This scene where Bolin was lifting that rubble up reminded me so much of Nukduk. Is it Nukduk? Number 9, it is an Attack on Titan reference in my book. I feel like the airbenders when they were walking and flying over the rooftops, it was just pretty cool because it was like fast paced. The airbending felt like it was the 3D maneuver and then they were fighting the colossal mecha giant. So I hope it was something for the Attack on Titan fans to be like, hey, here's something we did. I hope you guys like it. My favorite moment, it's probably not everyone's moment. I feel like I'm the only one who found that funny, but I hope you guys did too. It's when Veg turned on the EMP and all of the mech platoons just dropped like fly, like a domino effect. And it was just so funny because I felt like there were little kids wearing stilettos and they're just like fumbling around and they just all fell. I will dedicate this all to Prince Wu's things. I just felt like his character grew up so much from the first time we met him when he was a big douchebag and then now he's just like this adorable little green thing. You will love his singing because he managed to save the day because of that and also thanks to the badger moles and then now he wants the monarchy out of the Earth Kingdom and wants democracy, so maybe they really won't call it Earth Kingdom anymore. It's quite sad. It was when Tenzin was falling and and then Milo had to save him. But Tenzin's a huge guy, so Milo kind of struggled on helping him. And as he was landing down, I felt like Milo's gonna fart any second now just to save the day. And I thought they were gonna put something like that in there, but they didn't. So I thought Tenzin was gonna die. My fifth favorite moment is Jurek. It became canon. And also the proposal and also the wedding. It was just way to go. Like you I called Varric a big dick in my last episode because he really was and to just see him propose to Julie was everything I hoped and wanted for. So now I'm only asking for a spin-off. My fourth favorite moment and it's literally I think up there in the whole entire series is when Mako starts lightning bending inside the engine room to make sure that it explodes from the inside and then he starts slowly you know just getting weaker and weaker some of his clothes were getting torn off and he just looked cute even when he's like about to die well, he gets zapped by the spirit vine i believe or just some electricity from the spirit vine and he passes out and here comes Bolin saving the day once again. For my third favorite moment, it's when Korra and Kuvira fought. It was just like the best fight sequence I have ever seen, probably since The Matrix or something like that, or even Batman the Animated Series. So that's from a long, long time ago. So they even brought the fight outside of the mech giant when it exploded. They were in this, you know, spirit vine jungle, but the laser got out of control, so it ended up pointing to both Korra and Kuvira. She was shielding Kuvira from the laser and the laser goes off, Korra goes on to Avatar state and then next thing you know there was an explosion and another spirit portal shows up in the center of Republic City. Republic City is ruined. It's like all of anything that they built you know, from the first series characters because they built Republic City is like ruined now so they're gonna they're gonna have to start all over again. So after Julie and Varric's wedding, I believe this is at the reception, they were overlooking the water and Tenzin and Korra were talking. I just felt like this is like something that goes back to like the first couple episodes where Korra will never listen to Tenzin. Well she kinda did, but it was just like 
Yeah, Tenzin, you were right all along and that she finally understand how it works as an avatar and that she will she cannot quit being an avatar and that she loves being an avatar now and that was some sort of like a father-daughter moment so I feel like Tenzin was also talking to Aang even if Aang isn't there so as I sit here sitting through the final moment I realized I missed out on something I feel like I have my top 10 but I failed to mention this the Beifang sisters who who could forget them but me I think they were amazing in that whole, you know, Metal Gear vibe going when they were inside the Mech Giant. I just felt like they were really the daughters of Top. Like they were as great as, you know, everyone says Top is. And it just showed how great of a tag team they were. And also in the end, at Zurich's wedding, and Lynn isn't wearing her uniform for the first time and you could barely see the scar on her face and I felt like her hair styled differently. So that was pretty cool. So you can see a little bit of the softy side on Lynn. Now we've come to the final moment where Korasami shippers all around the world celebrated because Korra and Asami went on a vacation holding hands and you can interpret it whichever way you want but this was just, I feel like you know, maybe it could have been a different kind of ending. They could have ended it with just Korra and Tenzin talking. But when they said that they were going to go on a little vacation and they were by the spirit portal, I expected Bolin and Mako and even Opal to show up in the back and was just like, hey, we're going to go on a vacation with you. But they ended it with like, here, you know, fandom, here's your ship, the wonderful, wonderful Korosami ship. So I want to know what your top moments are. Please comment it down below and let me know. Also, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.